Good morning. Okay, it is 831. So let's get started. Good morning and welcome to Mind the Moments Thursday morning gathering brought to you by Harvard Pilgrim Healthcare and Tufts Health Plan. I'm Jackie Johnson and I am so delighted to be with you this morning filling in for Tara Healy who's away today. And welcome to anybody who's joining us for the first time and um, and a very warm welcome to all the regulars who, who are here today as well. So as we typically do, we'll start the morning with a question for the group and then um, share some thoughts and I will then lead a 12 to 15 minute guided meditation practice, and we'll save a bit of time at the end for questions. So if you open the chat at the bottom of your screen and just check that the drop down menu says everyone so that the community can see your comments. So let's all take a moment to arrive with a couple of intentional deep breaths feeling the sense of the weight of the body supported by the earth. And if you've already had a good bit of busyness in your day, just taking this moment to really settle into this time together. And my question for this morning is, what qualities of mind and heart are most helpful to you when you're learning something new or training in something that's perhaps challenging to you? What best supports meeting that experience, relating to that experience, or, or if it's easier um, to have some words come to mind, when you're supporting someone you care about who's learning something new, what are the qualities that you aspire to bring to that, to that loved one? And I, I, I was thinking about this question um, for me came out of, I'm, I'm starting a new pottery class next week, and it's something I've dabbled in before, but not for many, many years, and I'm definitely a beginner. And this came out of a one night class that I took a few months ago with my daughter that was a gift from my son-in-law to the two of us. It was a holiday gift and I really enjoyed it. So I've now signed up for the six weeks. And um, the night that my daughter and I were going to that one night class, she asked what I hoped to make before we even got there. And I joked and said, a large vessel. And then when we got to the class, each of us were seated in front of a wheel with five balls of clay. And the instructor said that we would each be leaving with two finished pieces, not that night, but after they were fired and glazed and so forth. And, uh, and he said that nobody'd ever not taken something home from the class. So immediately I thought, uh oh, what if I'm the first person that, that doesn't take something home, that doesn't produce a, a finished piece? And then we got going and it just felt really good. And I saw that some people were struggling, but I, I noticed that this lovely little bowl was emerging on my wheel. And I suddenly thought, wow, what if I'm the best in the class? And um, and I was able to catch the thought and kind of laugh about it. And it's amazing the wild rides that that the mind can can take us on. And, and both of these extremes of, you know, maybe I'll be the worst, maybe I'll be the best come out of being attached to, to the outcome and um and really cause a lot of contraction and, and less joy. And so it really struck me that that quality of humor was really valuable for me. And, and I noticed that in my, in my meditation practice as well, in staying more playful and curious, 
holding things lightly and and being a learner. So um, let's see, patience, giving everyone a bit of grace. Yes, patience, focus, clear instructions, patience, simplifying, patience and curiosity, focus, I'm easily distracted, open-mindedness and humility. Yeah, really beautiful. Um, whether we're new to this practice or we've been at it for many years, we're learning. We're training the mind and heart, and these are qualities that can really support us. So I'm curious if, if anybody has other thoughts to share about how these have supported you in other endeavors, in other ways that you've learned, or, or how you notice them making a difference as you support people that you care deeply about as learners. So um, feel free to keep adding things to, to the chat about this and about how these qualities are, are supportive. Okay, so with that, um, let's move into practice. So um, let's take a few moments again to settle in. I'm gonna offer some guidance and then we'll have some periods of silence during the practice as well. We'll probably go for about 15 minutes this morning. So find a posture that feels right for you for today, for this moment. And that can be standing if, if that's helpful, if you need some more um, wakefulness and energy in your practice this morning, or it could be a seated practice. Lying down works as well, but if you're at all tired, that can be a little bit dicey. So settling into a posture that feels wakeful, and most importantly, that invites in some relaxation and some ease. And if it feels right, allowing the eyes to close or casting the gaze downward just to minimize any distractions. And again, taking a couple of deeper than normal breaths and particularly attending to the exhalation to bring that sense of settling, releasing anything that's come before today and really bringing body and mind together in this moment as best you can. And simply noticing the rhythm of the breath going in and going out almost in the way that you might Notice swells on a, on a body of water. There's no particular way that we need to breathe. Just noticing how the body's breathing itself. And again, feeling the weight of the body supported by the earth. Feeling the weight in the seat, in the feet, in the hands. And beginning at the top of the head, sweeping through the body at your own pace, just inviting softening. Noticing sensations through the head, in the face, around the forehead, the eyes, the cheeks, the jaw, areas that can hold tension, sweeping down through the neck and shoulder areas. And again, just continuing at your own pace. And inviting release where you just notice any extra efforting
I'm coming back to that awareness of the body breathing, of sounds, sounds in the room, sounds outside the room, sound of my voice, sounds inside the body. Aware of sensations in the body, perhaps noticing feelings of vibration, of tingling in the hands where they make contact, in the feet. And choosing the anchor that's best for you this morning to bring a sense of collectedness of attention. So it's a gentle collectedness, finding that balance of, of effort and ease. We refer to this as an anchor because it's something that we can come back to as we drift. So that might be the breath wherever it's most prominent for you at the nostrils, in the chest, in the belly, or it could be the whole body breathing. Might be the feeling of the hands or the feet where they make contact if that feels easier for you this morning than the breath. And it could also be sounds coming and going all on their own. So there's nothing really here to do. Just choosing that anchor that's supportive and noticing what's coming and going all on its own. Inviting in some of those qualities that you've shared that support your learning. And we'll take some time in silence.
Noticing where the attention is. And each time you find that you're lost in thought, you can simply make a gentle note of that. Might be thinking or planning. And gently return, because this is really the rich opportunity of practice to meet this moment with awareness, with interest, kindness, patience, curiosity, humor, some of those other qualities. Sounds, sensations, thoughts, and emotions all arise and they pass. Seeing if you can be welcoming of all, there's nothing we need to get rid of.
And as we bring the practice to a close, may we all be safe and protected, be happy, be healthy and strong, live with ease. May the merit of our practice be of benefit to all and may the deepest wisdom and love guide and protect us all. And as you're ready, slowly bringing some movement back into the body, allowing the eyes to open if they've been closed and bringing the attention back to the group, to the screen. Thank you all for your practice. So um, we have some time to share questions if anybody has any, um, to share anything about your experiences, favorite book, poem, or, or other resource. I I'm also curious about when I, when I think of this idea of the qualities that we bring, it's, it's what comes to mind for me is the idea of being a learner more than a knower and the difference in that experience. So just curious if other people have thoughts about that. And as you posted some of those qualities, how is it different for you to, um, to really embody those for a loved one? I'm thinking about my granddaughter and how easy it is for me to be abundantly patient with her and to be so curious and to see the world through her eyes and to really bring those qualities in my experience of her. So I wonder for others how it's different for, for you when you kind of hold that space, if you will, or support somebody else in their, in their learning, in their growth, as opposed to bringing those qualities to your own experience as a learner when you're, when you're trying something new, when you're training the mind and the heart in the way that we are in this practice. How is it to find that balance of, of focus and of patience and um, giving everyone a bit of grace, as Tammy said? How do we do that for ourselves as compared to our experience of doing that of others? And again, please feel free also to share books, to share resources. Yeah, Tamara says, why is it easy to bring those qualities to kids and to dogs, but not always for our peers? Yeah, yeah, so true. What is it that we attribute to our kids, to our grandkids, to our pets um, that enables us to embody more patience and compassion and curiosity and, and qualities like that? I'll also share, I was listening yesterday to the On Being podcast. Some of you may know, know that. And, um, and a quote was shared that I looked up afterwards. This is a James Baldwin quote. The longer I live, the more deeply I learn that love, whether we call it friendship or family or romance, is the work of mirroring and magnifying each other's light. And that just seemed fitting with this idea too, that this training that we're, we're taking on here and being learners and how we meet these experiences as learners is really this work of, um, mirroring and magnifying each other's light, sometimes most difficult um, to magnify our own light. When I bring openness to the quality of being a learner, I also allow in the 
awkwardness or frustration of maybe learning something new. Absolutely. Trial and error when open to the new or the different. Yes, Teresa, really, really love that. Um, it's, you know, I think, again, it's so easy to know that with children, with pets, that learning anything new is awkward and there will be frustrations. That's just part of it. And, um, and when we can allow and make more space for that in our, our practice here or in anything we're doing, it both makes it more fun and it really opens it up. It softens that contracting that can make anything so much harder and, and certainly can make this practice a lot harder. So um, we have a couple more minutes if there's anything else and I want to thank you all for joining this morning. It's really been wonderful to be with you. And I'm thinking about also, as I look at this beautiful list of, of qualities of patience, of focus, of open-mindedness and humility, I want to cap see if I can capture the <clears throat> excuse me, the list pretty well here, a bit of grace, how inspiring it might be to really be intentional about bringing these qualities into our day to day, our day to day and going forward. So again, thank you all for being here. Wonderful to practice with you and look forward to seeing you again soon. Have a wonderful day and we will be back with you next week. Bye, everyone.